mountainous West Virginia is a land of valuable natural resources and pleasant scenic beauty. Into West Virginia's mountains within the last few years has gone a new force, the Civilian Conservation Corps, to make this recreation resource available to all people. The Civilian Conservation Corps was a relief uh, effort, one of the first of the New Deal agencies established by Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he became president in 1933. It was established in the first hundred days of his term to take the nation's youth and give them meaningful and gainful employment and put them in work camps where they could actually do good for the country. In 1933, uh, we were in the midst of a Great Depression, and uh, soil erosion was rampant. Uh, forest fires had decimated our state and national forests, and this was a way to get America's youth employed in these conservation measures. The New Deal had various alphabet agencies, the WPA, the NYA, uh, the Works Projects Administration, the National Youth Administration, and a whole host of others. The evidence of the CCC is probably what remains the most today. It's important that the history of the CCC be preserved to inform the future generations of America how these things that they are now enjoying, how they came into being. I'm Dr. Bob Anderson, and I live here in Harrison County and I'm president of the State CCC Museum Association. I just got sort of caught up with the uh, fact that these were unsung heroes, and in a way we kind of relate them to the former Vietnam veterans who were never given recognition. We have a lot of things around us that the CCC's built and that we still enjoy today. We have the state parks, we have bridges, we have lodges, we have um, many different roads that the CCC's built, things that we can enjoy today and will be there forever. And they worked with such a passion to do good work that it was lasting work. Since the Conservation Corps went into the parks, much has been done. Roads, bridges, cabins, lodges, and dams have been constructed and precaution has been taken to see that natural beauty is not spoiled. You have to remember today that these veterans of the CCC are 10 years older than a lot of your World War II veterans. Put yourself in 1933 America. Uh, the average rural person and the person from the inner city uh, probably never ventured 10 miles away from home, especially if you were a rural person, you, you grew up on a farm. We were not a transit society like we were after World War II. What this did is it took uh, the people from these rural areas, they put them into companies of men where they had to learn to live with and interact with other people. And I mean, that was something out of this world, the first time I'd been on a train. And the same way with uh, the rest of the boys. They'd never been away from home. Uh, I was out there in a desert, uh, close to the Valley of Fire, Logandale, Nevada. Well, I didn't get homesick as bad as some of them did, but uh, my father only worked one or two days a week in the coal mines, and there, there was five of us children and they could use the $25 a month that was sent to them. Once they were enrolled and went to the camps, they were to be paid $30 a month, and of that $30 a month, they were allowed to keep $5, and $25 was to be sent home to their families to help with, with their financial needs. We got up early in the morning, you'd done some exercises, and then you had breakfast, then about eight o'clock you went to work. I, I, I operated the bulldozers and carry-alls, then about four o'clock, you went back in and cleaned up and you ate at five. Then around six o'clock, you're supposed to go to school, you went to classes. We went to school from six to 10. We worked on bulldozers and carry-alls. Through the week, we operated them, doing the jobs. And then on Saturday, we had to go out and do the me mechanical work, grease them, have everything ready for start out on Monday morning again. When it was down in the desert, all I had was uh, the barracks was walled halfway up and had canvas drop down over and fill the tops so they could raise that up and let the breeze go through at nights. And then we went up in the mountains, it was the same way. Now here in West Virginia, in the mountains and stuff, they had these big pot-bellied stoves in the middle of the barracks. I'll tell you, it was good, healthy work, and it taught us how to live with other people. But when you went to CC camp, you were all alike. 
You were there for one purpose, and that was to do a job and make a little money. And most of them needed the money because back in the 40 and 41, there wasn't much work. Probably the lasting impact of the CCC would be the recreational facilities that they built across America. The planting of the trees was paramount to that because it, it eradicated the erosion problems that we had and the burnout. And then on top of that, they built the CCC structures. I haven't spoken with anyone uh, about the CCC who has not thought that it was a probably the most successful of all of the New Deal agencies. Nationwide, it took three and a half million youth and employed them. It gave them an education. It taught them how to work with other people. It took the boys and taught them how to be men. There were uh, 55,000 men in West Virginia CCC camps during the nine-year period. They were housed in 66 different locations, camps. Most of the CCC camps in West Virginia were in the two national forests, most of them in the Mon Nash Monongahela National Forest, and the rest, uh, several more in the George Washington National Forest. However, there were state park camps, uh, there were uh, soil conservation camps, and there was even one Corps of Engineers camp. Most of the CCC camps, though, were in the National Forest. Uh, the first camp was at the uh, Parsons Tree Nursery. The Great Works Program has removed a vast army from relief roles. It revived lagging industry, restored morale, and renewed courage. In a program which covers the entire nation, West Virginia takes an important place. Well, really, that was my first time to stay away from home. That's when I went in Camp, uh, camp Hardy, 1937. I was in five different camps. I was in there that's about, just about three years. I was in Black Mountain Camp, and I was in Parsons, and I was in Glady Fork Side Camp, and I was in Camp Hardy. I'd done everything. I'd done road work and carpenter work. Last work I'd done was carpenter work, down Horseshoe Run. Just like uh, this park here next to Elkins, uh, I worked in that park even. And Roosevelt Park up on the mountain, there, you probably know where it's at. I worked on that. And uh, Bear Haven Park, I helped build that. That was when I was in Glady Fork. I'd done a lot of carpenter work and land blocks. Yeah, some of them didn't, you know, know hardly anything when they come in, or they didn't know how to use a shovel. You know, and they did teach them. They soon learn how to use them. <laughs>